So my name is Meta Duvare. I am the lead for the Transform module and uh, the chief data officer for the Excellence in Agronomy initiative. I came into this initiative, it seemed to be a natural fit because I was leading the organized module of uh, CGIR's big data platform, a platform for big data and agriculture. Um, and we were developing a number of uh, products, a number of tools to be able to manage data better towards more open, more fair outcomes. FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, so the idea is to be able to accelerate our, our um, innovation processes, to be able to answer the, the important questions we're facing in agriculture. We need to be able to share data and use data quickly. Um, and, and all of our work in the big data platform was focused on that, and obviously it's a great fit for excellence in agronomy. So um, that's, that's how I came to be involved in it, and, and I'm an agronomist myself by training, and so it, it, you know, naturally a lot of the tools that I've been developing have focused on being able to um, it, it accelerate innovation uh, and, and reuse of data in the agronomy space. We're often dealing with little data, that needs to be um, uh, much better formatted, much more uniformly and quickly actionable, um, and it often isn't. Um, and so, you know, we call that interoperability, being able to uh, not only find the data quickly, being able to download it, you know, that means it needs to be open, uh, being able to then action on it. So when you say, you know, tomato, do I mean solanum? Or do I, you know, what, what, is it the same meaning that, that we're ascribing to the data we're collecting? And once we ascribe the same meaning, once we ascribe the same, you know, we have the same formats to be able to reuse that very quickly and aggregate data quickly because that's what's needed. Uh, that's where the big data aspect comes in, being able to have large volumes of data, easily aggregatable, easily actionable, um, then we can get somewhere. So that's where it becomes important to be able to do all of this. With CGIR, we have multiple centers. Uh, with the, the, the new model of working, one CGIR, the idea is to, to blur those silos quite a bit so that now we're sharing much more, we're reducing duplication of, of, of efforts, and we're sharing important uh, analytics advancements that we might have made in our, you know, working in our silos in the past. How do we bring that together? How do we get to more generalizable solutions in support of these, the use cases that are very central to the EIA model? Being able to do that not individually as, okay, I'm, I'm center A and I have these solutions and I'm going to support one or two use cases. I'm center B and I have my be bespoke solutions. Maybe 50 or 80 percent of you know, them might be common, or there may be commonalities across. Are we using our funds efficiently to be able to maximize those funds and be able to do new and interesting things by, co you know, making common our, our approach to those solutions? Making those, you know, identifying what are the common aspects, identifying where are those solutions generalizable um, in terms of the analytics part of it, and, 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 and supporting all of CGIR as a whole and therefore supporting many of our partners um, uh, who are working in, in the countries in which we work uh, in a much more effective way. That's, that's sort of the idea of what we're trying to do. The idea is to try and find where do those puzzle pieces fit best together um, and to operate off of certain key principles. So if you want to continue using your tool because there's a large number of partners who are already trained and already using that, how can we make sure that that tool conforms to the standards, conforms to the principles that allow that data to be very quickly um, found and, uh, and, and downloaded and, and reused. And, you know, is that data interoperable? So that whether you're collecting it for one particular problem right now, tomorrow or day after, it may be useful to be able to aggregate that data with, with some other um, agronomy or socioeconomics data. Um, to, to answer another problem that's much bigger perhaps or different, how do we do that easily? Do we, do we spend months trying to get that data whipped into shape to be able to do that? Or are we able to do that more easily? And that's, this is where the commonality, the principles, the standards come in. Now, of course, that would be much easier if we could all agree on one tool or two tools to do the same job or, you know, one or two models or, or analytics approaches to do the same job. We're unlikely to get there within, at least for the, for this, the beginning of this. Um, so the issue that we're trying to identify is what can we, where are those modules or pieces that can fit together well 
um, that can be easily pulled. It's almost like a library of, of books that can be checked out and used by whoever's out there. You know, it needs to be open. It needs to be um, pieces of the same puzzle that can be then locked, interlocked much more easily than we're able to do today. That's where the value of excellence in agronomy is. This, this bringing together of people under the umbrella is not just to, you know, for namesake, it's to try and get to that point, to try and get those efficiencies, to try and get to that big, you know, making that big puzzle um, with, with all of these different, so far, individual bags of puzzle pieces, trying to bring them together and fit them in a, in a, in a bigger piece that's a whole. From the transform point of view, um, there's four support groups. There's the data support group, data management support group, the analytics and modeling support group. There's also a validation support group and an interfaces support group. And this is really much more where the rubber hits the road in terms of the road to, the, to our demand partners, to our scaling partners rather, who are going to take what we, who are going to be able to ideally use what we come out with uh, to, to, good, to good effect, um, to, to actually make a difference uh, in the farmer's fields with the farmers, working with the farmers, working with the extension agents. Um, how do we do that? So, so we need to make sure, first of all, that whatever we're doing in terms of reusing that data, in terms of the analytics um, uh, um, uh, results that come out of aggregating the data, running our models, are they, are they really going to make a difference? So that's where the validation comes in. You know, we need to validate those efforts, first of all, in the farmer's fields, working with the farmers, ideally, um, in a way that's focused on the abilities and the constraints of the farmers to actually, you know, how will they interact with this? How, if we're talking about advisories going to farmers, how are they going to interact with it? How are those advisories going to be bundled? You know, it, it's not just okay, here's the right amount of fertilizer to add in this particular location. No, that depends on a lot of other factors. It may depend on market conditions. It certainly depends on whether it, it depends on a whole host of other um, external conditions as well. So how do we bundle all of that together in a way that makes sense and is, and is temporarily, tempor temporarily um, uh, valid? You know, so at a certain time, this is what the farmer needs to be doing if the conditions t change. Our recommendations need to change as well. Um, this is where the validation and the interfaces com comes in. So, um, you know, being able to make sure that that our scaling partners and our end users are getting the information in actionable ways, user friendly ways, um, in in ways that 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 take into account all of the other externalities that the farmer is, is faced with is absolutely critical. And we have, a, he, we have an eye to that. We don't have all the answers right now, but this is what Excellence in Agronomy is trying to get to, to get to those answers. I guess what I would hope for from the data and, you know, I, I have, I, for, for the data and analytics part of it, um, uh, what I would hope is that we can make, we can get to the vision of a very easily actionable knowledge base of data and tools that are very, you know, the, the tools can quickly grab collections of data or, or data and, and, and with m much less effort than it takes today to be able to plug the data into the analytics um, uh, uh, scripts, you know, to be able to have those scripts be able to action over that data more easily than we can do now because the data is, you know, you collect your data in one way, I collect my data in one way. So we want to get to much more easily interoperable and reusable data for sure. From the analytics point of view, we want to try and get to where, um, you know, I can go to a central ideally a central uh, repository, this would be a different uh, the GitHub repository, for instance, uh, where, where you can check out different uh, uh, scripts and, and be able to put them into your particular tool, your advisory pipeline, essentially, to be able to make use of different, um, uh, the different tools that different use cases um, uh, can, need to be able to use. So, so right now what are sitting in different centers becomes much more of a common repository, uh, more easily plug and play kind of uh, 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 flow or pipeline to be able to use those analytic scripts, to be able to use the data, to use well-validated results from those analy analytics um, and to get to, to you know, actual difference in the fields um, of, the, of the end users that we are here to serve, essentially. That's a big vision. We probably won't get there even in three years. But along the road, we should have actionable, you know, not actionable, but, but really um, uh, measurable, I would say, differences 
um, through our work, w you know, across the teams uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, the the impact assessment. Are we making, you know, are we actually able to measurably, uh, 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 you know, ma make a difference? Are we able to to see differences in the indicators that we're actually trying to to see differences in? Um, that's what I expect to hopefully get to by by the third year of this initiative, and then building on that you know, really make that much smoother in, in, uh, uh, in, the, in the consequent years. And, and the model for me, the, the vision, is, is driven really by, by the, the, the changes, that the advances that have been made in the biomedical field, because they have that. They have one collection, one knowledge base, where you can get data very quickly um, um, on, 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 you know, genetics and genomics information that's very easily plug and play into tools that are also accessible from that one um, go-to place, the, the, the one-stop shop, essentially. We have the beginnings of that called Guardian, but we, we, we don't have it all put together in a way that makes sense. We're still quite far from, from where we need to be. Um, so for me, that's the vision, and it's driven by what's been possible in the, the genetics, genomics, and biomedical field. Um, even if the, the data we're dealing with is much more heterogeneous, much more difficult, perhaps, than biomedical data, I think we can get there. And I hopeful that we can certainly make steps towards that in the first three years of this initiative. That's my vision, I guess. <laughs>